So we all know that the Earth has just one moon, right? Well, the actual number of moons that the Earth has might be a little bit more complicated than that. Let's find out more. Before we start though, it's important to make sure we have a definition of the term moon. I'm going to say that a moon is a natural satellite that orbits a planet, dwarf planet or other solar system body. A moon is actually a bit of a colloquial term derived from our own moon, but I'm going to use the term instead of natural satellite for two reasons. Firstly, moon is a term that everyone understands. And secondly, and probably more importantly, I just really like the word moon. Also, just to be certain, I'm not talking here about any of the artificial satellites that we've put into orbit. So I'm not counting any of the weather satellites or communication satellites or any of the other kind of satellites that has a human origin. So I'm going to start off with our little journey of finding out with the moon that we all know about. You know, the one that we can frequently see in the sky, often at night, but even during certain days it's visible during daylight hours. It orbits the Earth at a distance of 384,000 kilometres, or roughly 238,000 miles. That's actually 1.28 light seconds. So when you look up at the sky and see the moon, you're actually seeing the moon as it was just over a second and a quarter ago. The moon orbits the Earth in 27 days, 7 hours and 43 minutes, give or take. This is called a sidereal month. However, the time between one new moon and the next new moon, which is called the synodic month, is slightly longer. This is because when a new moon happens, the moon is between the Earth and the Sun, and so we can't see the light from the Sun reflecting off the moon, because the sunlight's coming from the wrong direction. As a result, the moon isn't visible from the Earth. As the moon orbits the Earth, the Earth continues to move in its orbit around the Sun. So when the moon gets back to its same position relative to the Earth, the moon isn't actually in the same alignment between the Sun and the Earth, and must travel a little further in order for us to get to the next new moon. This means that the synodic month actually lasts for about 29 and a half days. The moon is also tidally locked. This means that it rotates at the same speed as it orbits the Earth. The result of this is that we always see the same side of the moon, and this is common among many of the moons in the solar system. So that's the moon that everyone knows about, but are there more? Well, the answer is maybe. We might have to stretch our definition a little, but let's see what we can find and I'm going to talk about a number of possibilities, the first of which are ghost moons. These were first postulated by Kazimierz Kordilewski, I hope I'm saying the name right there, in the 1950s. He later saw them in the 1960s, but their existence wasn't actually confirmed until 2018. These ghost moons, or Kordilewski clouds, occur at Lagrange points in the Earth-Moon system. Lagrange points exist between two massive bodies that have a gravitational influence on each other. Between the Earth and the Moon, as we can see here, there are five Lagrange points called L1 to L5. These Lagrange points are places where the gravitational pull of both of the bodies is sort of cancelled out. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it'll do us for now. L1, L2 and L3 all lie in line with the two bodies, and are often unstable. However, L4 and L5 lie at about 60 degrees along the orbit of the Moon here, as can be seen on screen. These Lagrange points form an equilateral triangle with the Earth and the Moon. And it's here at L4 and L5 we find these Kordilevsky clouds. These clouds are made from very small particles indeed, some of them only as big as particles of dust, but the clouds themselves are huge. They take up about six degrees of angular diameter. That's about 12 times the size of the moon, which takes up just half a degree. So these clouds are about 65 by 45,000 miles in size. That's nearly 105,000 by 72,000 kilometers. One cloud moves ahead of the moon, and the other trails the moon, orbiting the Earth. Though these clouds are big, 
They are, however, very faint. Some people have seen them, but they are difficult to spot. And some people who think they've seen the clouds have actually seen the Gegenschein. This is a patch of slightly brighter sky seen at night, directly opposite the sun, and it's caused by the backscatter of light off interplanetary dust. So even though these clouds are not considered to be moons, they're certainly interesting. But that isn't the end of our story, so let's move on and have a look at our next possible moons. So next up we have what are known as quasi-satellites. These are bodies that orbit the Sun rather than the Earth, but orbit in a similar location to the Earth and take about the same time as the Earth to orbit the Sun. Quite often they have orbits that are more oval in shape than that of the Earth, and this means that even though they're orbiting the Sun, from the point of view of an observer on Earth, they look like they're actually orbiting us. There are a number of known quasi-satellites of Earth, including 469219 Camo Oalewa, I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is a small asteroid with a diameter of roughly 40 to 100 metres, that's about 130 to 330 feet. Also, 2004 GU9, this is between 160 and 360 metres in diameter, that's about 520 to 1200 feet. One body here that I think deserves special mention is an asteroid that was for a while thought to be another true moon of the Earth, and that's called Cruinia. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a large body with a diameter of roughly 5 kilometres, or just over 3 miles. This orbits the Sun close to the Earth, but its orbit relative to the Earth traces out a horseshoe shape taking about 770 years to complete one horseshoe-like movement around the Earth. All of these quasi-satellites lie outside of the Earth's hill sphere. The hill sphere is a sphere around the Earth inside of which the Earth's gravitational influence dominates. Any true moon would have to lie within the Earth's hill sphere. The next group of objects that we're going to look at are called Trojans. These are another group of quasi-satellites, but ones with quite particular characteristics. These objects lie around the Lagrange point between the Earth and the Sun. Just like the Earth and the Moon having Lagrange points, like we saw before where the Kordileski clouds exist, there are Lagrange points in the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. They lie in the same relative places and have similar characteristics. Trojans occur at the L4 and L5 Lagrange points, which are the most stable. Though in fact, we've only ever found Trojans at the L4 Lagrange point. That's the one that precedes the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. These bodies not only orbit the Sun, but also orbit around this Lagrange point. And we've discovered two Earth Trojans so far. The first is designated 2010 TK7 which is a roughly 300 metres, or about 1,000 feet in diameter, and this was discovered in 2010 by the WISE Space Telescope. It orbits the Sun, but also travels in what's known as a tadpole orbit, moving closer to and further away from the Earth, taking 395 years to complete one loop. The second Trojan, designated 2020 XL5, was only discovered in 2020, this is larger than the first, being about 1.2 kilometres, or that's about three quarters of a mile in diameter. If it was visible from the Earth, it would trace out a slow oval pattern in the sky as it goes about its tadpole orbit. In 2022, this body was given the permanent designation 614689, and officially recognised as a minor planet. This means it's now eligible for a name and bodies of this type are typically given mythological names. Our final possibility for extra moons are temporary moons. These are asteroids that normally orbit the Sun, but if they venture too close to the Earth and are travelling slow enough, they can be captured by our gravity and will remain satellites of the Earth for a period of time before being recaptured by the Sun and moving off into a solar orbit once again. Sometimes these bodies don't quite go into orbit, but are temporarily captured for less than one complete orbit, and these are known as temporarily captured flybys. 
bodies that complete at least one full orbit are known as temporarily captured orbiters. A number of these temporary moons have been detected, and these include 2006 RH120. This body, 2 to 3 metres, that's between 6 and 10 feet in diameter, was first discovered in 2006. It completed one orbit roughly every three months until it left Earth orbit in June 2007. It appears that 2006 RH120 comes into close proximity to the Earth roughly every 21 years, so on its next close approach it may well become a temporary satellite once again. In fact, there is a slight chance that it could hit the Earth on its next approach. If it did, it would strike with a force of about one kiloton of TNT. Just for context, the Chelyabinsk meteor that nearly hit the Earth in 2013 was equivalent to about 440 kilotons. So, not great if it happens to land on you, but in terms of the Earth, not a great threat. Another body is being discovered, and this one's designated 2020 CD3. And this is a diameter of about 1 metre, or roughly 3 feet. It appears that CD3 was captured by the Earth in around 2016, and left orbit again in 2020. It had a chaotic orbit taking between 70 and 90 days to orbit the Earth. Its closest approach occurred in April 2019 at a distance of just 13,000 kilometres, that's about 8,100 miles. Computer models have suggested that the Earth has at least one temporary satellite at any given time. So, even though the Earth has only one official moon, called the Moon, space in the vicinity of the Earth isn't quite as empty as you might think. It would appear that we are joined on our journey around the Sun by a number of permanent or temporary companions. And at least now, if anyone asks you if you saw the Moon last night, you can reply, which one? So I think that's enough for now, and for now and until next time, thank you for watching.